I gave myself one week to design, sculpt, print, and paint a miniature. And here it is. After my last video, I realized that I really needed to get to work finishing a crew for my game Spire Seas, something that I could use to playtest a little further and show the game off even more. So I gave myself one week to go from concept to tabletop standard. Let's see how I did. I started off with some basic sketches, just a few rough ideas to get the correct pose and some of the basic details down. I already had a rough idea in my head of the kind of character I was going for. A melee fighter character with two separate weapons, something a little more roguish than my previous veteran warrior character. And I knew that I wanted to include a little bit more of those sci-fi elements from the setting. So I settled on this dual axe wielding power stanced character, and added in the hood from one of the previous sketches. I usually find that my fifth or sixth sketch is the one I end up choosing, so I really recommend doing at least a few of these before you settle on a design when you're making your own character. For this piece of concept art, I knew that the biggest challenge was going to be nailing the perspective, but I also knew that I could really deal with that once I had the character in Blender. The posing was going to be much simpler in 3D. So instead of really worrying about his weird arm, I focused instead on the details. The armor and weapons and the backpack, which appeared. I didn't think I was going to do a backpack, but I did. I also did these side-on sketches, which are really useful when you're doing any hard surface work in Blender. With the line art finished, I moved on to just a quick pass of color. Nothing too fancy, just enough to give myself an idea when I went ahead and painted it. For this character, I chose a dark green for the cloak and hood, and just some browns and grays for the other details. For future models, I really want to spend a little more time at this stage testing out different color schemes, but I was super eager to get to work on the next stage, which was 3D sculpting. Once again, I put Jimmy the Scav to work as my base model. This is my first miniature, and I've been using it as a test model to show off the game so far. Uh, but it's pretty basic. It's enough to give me a baseline though. Now, if you want to see how I made him, you can take a look up here. He's already rigged up and ready to go, so I could quickly get into posing and skip a lot of the monotony of re-sculpting the same human body shape and especially rigging. Now, you might consider me using a rigged base model cheating my one week rule, and you'd be right. But I made up the rule, so I don't care. Once I had settled on a pose that would work well for this character, I got started on the coolest part, his axes. I used one of Jimmy's tomahawks as a guide and sketched out the shape of the axe head from my concept art. Then I went ahead and did the same on the other side. Then I briefly wondered which axe should be in his right or left hand, and whether he was right or left handed. And then I quickly realized that it didn't matter. I was 3D printing it, and you can mirror them if you want to. I did have a bit of trouble getting the axe head to follow the rig, so my solution was to leave that for the next day and move on. For his cloak, I ended up using four separate subdivided cubes, sculpted by hand to match the pose. One for the torso, one for each arm, and one for the head. Next was to slap on some simple armor plates. I used the really simple technique of snapping a plane to the base mesh, then extruding a few faces on either side, and then using the solidify modifier. Again, this ensures that I can make the mesh manifold and overlapping fully when it comes time to boolean them together. Next, I got to work on his backpack. I started with a simple cube and then extruded and stretched to get some nice sci-fi shapes. I also added a few cylinders and this hanging cloth bit. I ended up draping it by hand over the backpack, but I'm sure there is a better, faster, better looking way to do this. Let me know if you have any tips down in the comments below. Next came the face mask, some straps, and just a few panels to tie everything together. 
With the basic shapes done, I could then move on to the details. Remembering how much time I sunk into almost barely noticeable details on my previous model, I really tried to keep things simple, but there were a few things that I needed to take care of. For example, on the axes, I had to make sure that everything was manifold and finished before I could attach them to the handle and get them in place. One of the problems I had earlier, and why it wasn't lining up with the rig, was that each part was actually a separate part inside the same object. Basically, I had accidentally added cubes to a cube instead of making new ones, if that makes sense. This meant that I couldn't just boolean everything together and call it good. I had to manually go back through and realign the vertices to make a single manifold object. This was not too difficult, but certainly time consuming and something I now remember to avoid in the future. Then after attaching that head to the handle, I moved on to the next axe. This one I added a little bit more detail to. It was kind of plain to begin with, so I added these rivets and just a little bit of a back part of the axe. Finally, once those meshes were finished into single axes, I could go back in and readjust the weight painting. This, I found out, was the reason why it wasn't snapping to the rig. I find that I often have this problem when I try to boolean a new object to a already rigged object. So if you're getting these weird squiggles, then just check the weight painting, and if it's blue, you've got a problem. With the weapons finished, I could move on to detailing the rest of the sculpt. As I went through adding details, I also went ahead and checked everything to make sure the geometry was clean. If I found any non-manifold edges or any serious problems, I could clean it up now before I started putting everything together. This would save me a lot of time down the road. I also went through all of my armor panels and solidified them, making sure that they still fit within the mesh and everything looked clean. The subdivision here is especially important for the leather straps to make them look nice and smooth. Some of the armor panels I kept angular, but even that looks nicer with a little slight beveled edge. Oh, and one last thing, I added a nice little 25mm base. And this one includes a hole for a magnet to fit in, which will help a lot when printing and painting. And with that, the sculpting was finished. This was definitely the longest part of the process, and I only had two days left to go, so time to get it printed. The model itself got its supports added in Lychee. In the past, I've used mostly Chudubox, but I've started experimenting with Lychee because I think it's a little easier to get nice thin supports, which is very useful when making tiny little 28mm miniatures. These supports here are mostly auto supports, and I also went ahead and added a few extras where I thought it might be useful or necessary. And because I knew that the backpack, especially those little pipes or wires on the bottom, would cause problems, I also made a version of the sculpt with the backpack and the figure separated. So you can choose whichever one you'd like. Then I moved all of those over to Chudu Box and laid them out on my print bed. Two fully put together ones and two separated pieces, so that I could test out which one worked better. For the bases, I didn't need to add any supports, because, well, I designed them that way. So I just put them bottoms up and laid out six of them. After just a few hours, everything was printed, washed, cured, and ready for primer. I did end up getting a misprint on one of the tiny little backpacks, but the other one printed perfectly, so I'm not sure what happened there. And everything else printed more or less fine. So time to get painting. First, I sprayed everything with a nice coat of basic gray primer. This is Mr. Surfacer Primer from the Hobby Shop. I was planning to add a nice black undercoat and a white Zenithal, but it was getting kind of dark and kind of humid, so I just skipped it. And we'll see if it really makes that much of a difference after painting. Then I picked out a few of my colors from my rack and got to work. The coat got a coat of angel green. The boots, weapon handles, and shoulders got a nice coat of oak brown. 
The pants got desert yellow. The little cloth on his backpack was painted with skeleton bone. The backpack itself and the face mask got some deep blue just to add some contrast and show that this was, you know, painted metallic something in the past. The straps were covered with the fittingly named leather brown. And all of the metal bits were painted with plate mail metal. And the skin was painted with barbarian flesh. Now, I wasn't too happy with the yellow color of the pants. I thought it distracted a bit too much from the main model. So I went back over it with a coat of necromancer cloak. This dark gray really let the brown of the boots and straps pop and made sure that the focus stayed on the face and cloak. Finally, the wires on the backpack got just a pop of bronze. Overall, it is very similar to the painting on my Scav Veteran, the first miniature that I painted, but just a little bit more saturated and a little less rusty, but I might add more rust. But this time I also had a base to deal with, so I took some inspiration from my previous video, my diorama build, and used basically the same techniques as on the concrete there. I covered everything with dark stone, then went around the edges with matte black, added a few splotches of that necromancer cloak, and finally touched it off with some moss. Then, once everything was dry, I went over the whole thing with a nice coat of strong tone shade. And then I rinsed my brush and set it down, and called it good. One week, and we went from this to this. I think he's ready to join my veteran out on the Spire Seas. But they still need the rest of their crew and, well, a ship. So if you want to see that, then stick around here on the channel. In the meantime, you can find your own little scav chopper over on myminifactory.com. If you do get him printed out and painted, then let me know over on Instagram or Twitter. I'd love to see what a more experienced painter can do with one of these miniatures. Anyway, that's all for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.